All right. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, trust that you're all doing well. We'll continue to learn about Believer's Authority. We'll get started with a word of prayer. And uh, would anyone here the on-campus Diksha? Why don't you pray? Start with prayer. Then we'll get into the... Let's pray. Lord Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, Lord, for this day, Lord, that you gave us. And Lord, thank you for again that we are learning uh, your word, Lord. Help us, guide us, Lord, give us knowledge and wisdom. So, Lord, we will be able to learn properly. And Lord, I give you to our lecturer in your hand, Jesus. Lord, give her also your knowledge and guidance, Lord, give your strength, Lord. So, Lord, she will teach us your word, Lord Jesus. Our Lord opens to every student's heart, so Lord, we will be able to see the what you are revealing to us, Lord. Our glory, our honor, I give you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Diksha. Uh, let's continue. We had completed chapter 8, so now we can begin uh, with chapter 9. We were talking about all the different spheres where we can exercise our authority. And uh, we also saw how the enemy plays mind games. And we must be aware of these mind games so that we can identify it quickly and take our dominion. Um, we talked about enforcing our victory. We, do we already have the victory? Yes. Okay. Uh, is Satan already defeated? So we know these things. As believers, all we have to do is by faith, we need to go ahead and enforce that victory. So use the authority which has already been given to us. These are the things that we looked at in the last class. Today, we'll talk about having a lifestyle where um, having an overcomer's lifestyle. So one thing that we have to understand is Jesus has already given us whatever we need to be an overcomer. So it's it's not like we are we have to do something to get that authority or dominion. We already have it. But exercising it, knowing it, being aware of it, and exercising it in every situation is what is required. So what is the lifestyle that a believer can have, which will, first of all, protect us? It will protect us right, from the attacks of the devil and also uh, help us to defeat the devil each time. He's already defeated, but with our actions, we can go ahead and, uh, you know, completely take charge of our victory in those situations. So what are some attacks that the enemy brings against us? Usual attacks or usual, um, you know, games that he plays. What are those? Intimidation. Discouragement, okay. Anything Intimidation. else? Usually, what does he do? We've already finished all this, so you have to be quick. Yeah, Sister mind game. Intimidation. Mind Wrong thoughts. Um, okay, can we state a few more? Generally, what does he bring? What comes to our minds? Okay, fear, depression, distractions. I think that's what you mean, Sister Lucy, by gadgets. Worry, okay, Shani is saying worry. Temptation, good. Ar argument? Okay, fine. Yeah, arguments, we've seen the progression. We said that thoughts can um, move from just that place to imaginations, arguments become strongholds. So these are all aspects that we've seen. Good. So these are the ways in which Satan attacks us. So as a believer, what should our lifestyle look like to keep overcoming the devil every time? That's what we are going to consider. So one, um, one real important thing for us to reconcile in our minds is that now we are in Christ Jesus. Okay? We are in Christ Jesus. We have that position in Christ. And when we are in Christ, the scriptures teach us that we are hidden in Christ. We are positioned right in Christ. Uh, 
and, and therefore, we already have a place of immunity. What does immunity mean? Health-wise immunity, we, we talk, right? Yeah, what, what is immunity? Yeah, strength to withstand, strength to overcome. Let's say, uh, you know, we are exposed to some form of infection or some allergen. When we have immunity, it won't affect us. Okay, we can overcome that. Same way, as a believer, Satan and his tactics, we cannot escape it if we are on the earth. Right? But since we are in Christ Jesus, we already have a place of immunity in him. Yeah, because we are in him, we are in Christ. And as long as we are walking with the Lord, the enemy cannot touch us. That's what scripture teaches us. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 18, we can read that. Could someone pick up that scripture, please? 1 John 5, verse 18 and 19. Those two scriptures, yeah. Diksha will read it. And we can all listen carefully to what it says. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Okay, so um, a few key things. We are of God. We know that we are of God. We are in Christ and we are of God. We belong to God. So that is something for us to always remember. We are of God. And it also says that a believer, when we are walking in righteousness, he keeps himself. Okay, We keep ourselves away from unrighteousness. And the evil one cannot touch us. So when we are walking in righteousness, evil one cannot touch us. So it is a place of immunity. Being in Christ, belonging to Christ itself is a place of immunity to begin with. Now let's look at other things that will give us the strength to overcome the enemy's tactics. The next important aspect to remember is intimacy. Okay? Intimacy. Intimacy with God. What is intimacy? Closeness. Close relationship. Okay? So having a close relationship with God is what is known as intimacy. So when we are, uh, when we have that kind of a relationship with God, God's protection is on our lives. Psalm 91. What does Psalm 91 say? Let's read the initial few scriptures. We could read verse 1 and maybe even verse 2. Verse 1 and 2. How about someone online? Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. Sister, can I say, I'm by, I know it by heart. Oh. First two lines are, yes, sister. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, yes. Okay, fine. One, one verse is uh, enough. What do we understand from that one verse? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So it's talking about being positioned in God's presence. When we are positioned like that, we are told that we are dwelling in the shelter of God. Or how does shelter help us? If we have shelter? Secure, yeah, secure, safe, isn't it? So when we are dwelling in the intimate presence of God, God is our shelter. He is our protection. Got it? So then, that also is immunity, isn't it? It gives us that strength to overcome the attacks of the devil. Let's consider for a moment the life in the Garden of Eden and the mandate that God gave man. So going way back when God created 
man, woman. He put them in the garden. Did he give them any weapons to protect themselves against Satan? Was Satan around at that time? Yes, he was. He very much was because we see him coming and trying to deceive Eve, uh, you know, at that point. So he was around. Now, God knew that he was around. Did God give any weapons? Say, okay, keep these weapons. Satan will come. Then you can attack him back. Think and tell me. Yeah, just instructions about, you know, what to do, what not to do. Um, all right. So they didn't have any weapons as such. We are all clear about that. Then how did God expect them to be safe? Hmm? Follow the instruction. OK. Anything else? How did their safety come? They didn't have any weapons, no? So then how did they yeah. ask it? Yes, yes, sister. God's presence was with them. God was dwelling with them. OK. So God's they... presence. Yeah. OK, God's presence. And um, uh, Lucy says, obedience, through obedience. And that, that's what Akhil was saying. Follow the instructions. There's safety in those instructions. So yeah, then, if they did not have weapons, um, they could still be safe. And we will look at four reasons how they could be safe You know, in that situation. First is, as uh, Sister Gertrude said, the presence of God. Okay? Adam and Eve had fellowship. They had a relationship with God, isn't it? God used to come, speak to them, uh, spend time with them. So communion with God. And we've already seen Psalm 91, when we are in the presence of the Lord, He is our shelter, He is our refuge. So having our, our strong relationship with God um, is already a place where there is protection, that communion with God. Okay, That's a place of protection. And then what else did they have? We said that God commanded them. God gave them instructions. As long as they walked in obedience, was everything OK? Everything was OK, because they were obedient to the command of God. And the same applies for us today. One is the presence of God. If we, are, we have the presence of God, if we have communion with God, we have that relationship, intimacy, we said, right? Close relationship with God, there is protection in that. Secondly, obedience to what God says. When we are walking in that way, there is protection. We can call it submission, isn't it? When we submit to what God is calling us to do, uh, then again, there is protection in that. What else? Apart from that, we know that God asked them to take charge of the garden, to tend it, to nurture it, care for it, protect it. So God gave them responsibility. Isn't it? To take care of the uh, place that he entrusted to them. Apart from this, in Genesis 1, from verses 26 to 28, when we read, we also see that God blessed them. And what did he say? Be fruitful and multiply. So God gave them a responsibility. What was that responsibility? Responsibility to be fruitful, to multiply. Uh, to subdue, have dominion, and also to take care of the task that God gave them. So as long as they were doing what God asked them to do, were they safe? They were safe. Okay? So the same things apply to us today. Whatever God has called us to do, our assignment, our responsibility. You know? We can talk about the broad responsibility of glorifying God, the broad responsibility of living for God's purposes. We can also talk about the uh, personal details of that. Now, what is it that God has called you and me to do? We've got to be engaged in those things. right? And when we do that, there is automatically a safety that comes from taking up the responsibility. 
that God has given us. And of course, you know, God gave them dominion. He gave them dominion um, and uh, he wanted them to rule and reign. He gave them power to subdue. We read about all the sections in nature that he assigned to them and said, okay, now you go subdue, take charge, have dominion. And as long as they were walking in that dominion, there was still safety. Same thing applies to us today. God has given us, because we have been created in the image of God, that dominion was originally given to us. And we've talked about how during the fall, the, uh, you know, the scales kind of shifted and Satan took charge. But thank God for Jesus. He has redeemed us. He has bought back that authority and he told all authority is mine and I give it to you. So as believers, right now we have that authority. We're carrying that authority. So as long as we're walking in that authority, that again, it's, it's like a protection. Right? It's our protection. So these were um, those four things that helped Adam and Eve stay in a place of safety while they did not have any you know so called weapons with them so what what are those four things one is relationship with god relationship with god protected them secondly submission to god's instruction protected them as long as they were walking according to what god was telling them to do they were fine okay next is responsibility so they took up responsibility uh, of whatever God wanted them to do. That again protected them and taking charge of the dominion that God had called them to. So in this way, they were able to stay safe. But the moment Satan came and he um, deceived Eve, they disobeyed God, they lost. Isn't it? So how do we apply this to ourselves? I've already been sharing, you know, how we could, we could, um, when we, when we are, when we understand these things, and then even we pursue intimacy with God, there is safety for us. Uh, when we take up our responsibility, there's safety for us. When we are strong in our identity in Christ, okay, there is safety for us. So these are things that we can learn from, and the, that helps us to be overcomers. Right? at all times. So I'll keep going through the next couple of sections. If you have any doubts, questions, or you know any comments, please uh, feel free. You can unmute and ask uh, right away. But I'll keep going forward. So let's go to the next section here that talks about consecration. Okay, Consecration and obedience to God. Consecration means dedication and we've discussed this you remember when we said if any object is dedicated to um uh, you know we we saw in the in the case of demons when it is dedicated to those demons it becomes an expression a vessel uh, for expression so the flip side of that is when we as believers dedicate ourselves to god right god can manifest his presence his glory through each of us. So consecration is very important. We need to be dedicated to God. We need to be uh, committed to God, submitted to God. We've seen that word earlier and be obedient to God. Do you recall James chapter 4? We've seen that passage earlier. Let's quickly look at two verses. James 4 verses 6 and 7. Um, another person can read it please. So Diksha finished. Maybe Sabita can read it now. James chapter 4, verse mm. 6 and 7. Yes. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble submit yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you 
All right. Thank you, Sabita. So we notice that God gives grace to the humble. The humble are people who walk under God's authority, isn't it? So when we humble ourselves, what are we saying? We are saying, okay, God, you know, we we surrender, we um, uh, we submit ourselves to you. It's a place of submission, uh, and not only that. In verse seven, the scripture says, "Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you." We've been talking about overcoming the devil, and to overcome the devil. um we we saw the basis for that how jesus died on the cross and because he has uh, already won the victory over satan now we can enforce our victory so using that we want to resist the devil right we will come to a uh, um, section where we will talk about you know what are some of the commands that we can use i rebuke you you know we bind um, and, and so many different ways in which we can actually resist the devil so resisting is important because satan he he throws his um fiery darts his attacks on us right so we have to resist it but there's a very important thought before the resisting what is that what is it submission to god right so there's no point if we try to resist the devil while we are unsubmitted to god because what happens when we are disobedient or if we um have sin in our lives that is not dealt with what does it act as open doors so we already have so many open doors and then here we are trying to resist the devil do you think it will be effective definitely not so while resistance is so very key we have to resist the devil what is even more important is to begin with submission so when we begin with submission submit to god then resist the devil otherwise all are battling against the devil i mean it's it's futile we are just wasting our energy resisting and binding and rebuking and casting out because you cast out he'll come back there are lots of open doors for him to come back so submission to god is what keeps us safe when we are submitted to god and then we resist the devil so both are important we are not saying um, you know don't take charge don't resist that's not what we are saying we are saying let's begin with submission may our lives be submitted wholly to the lord and then we resist the devil he will flee from us so there's a beautiful statement in our notes here it says to the extent he reigns in me he can also reign through me reign means rule so what we are saying is if we are submitted to god in such a way that god is ruling in every area of our lives okay if god is ruling in um i'm just for example sake you know god is ruling as far as my time is concerned i give my time to the lord i commit my time to the lord if god is ruling as far as you know my finances are concerned god is first place when in the way i manage my finances or in my relationships i put god first in every area of our lives if god is ruling and reigning meaning we give him full submission and god is the one who has everything in that area of our lives then what happens is um you know that, that the way in which we have submitted to god or the extent to which he is ruling and reigning he will be able to rule through us okay we are now going to resist the devil whether it is in our own lives or if we see another person oppressed we want to go against the devil isn't it so if god is ruling mightily in us then we can enforce that authority effectively uh, in our ministry okay so this is the right way of considering overcoming the devil is is that fine or is it confu am i confusing you <laughs> okay fine all right so that's good so if there are any um, points for discussion please feel free to bring it up uh, we'll keep moving on we'll go to the next section here that talks about the armor of god so the 
scriptures teach us that one of the ways in which we can be safe from the attacks of Satan is to put on the armor. There is an armor. It is an invisible armor. Uh, it's a spiritual armor, right? Right now, we can't see it. None of us are dressed with, with a helmet and a breastplate and carrying swords. At least I can't see it with my natural eyes. Uh, OK, for the skit, yeah, you, you will be dressed later. But right now, you're not. Uh, however, there are these spiritual parts of the armor which we are supposed to put on. And that's what scriptures encourage us to do. So let's quickly read through the section that speaks about the spiritual armor. Uh, and then I will share. So the next person, I think it would be Blessy. Blessy, could you read from Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18? Ephesians 6 and 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and with the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of the righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Okay. And, yeah. Go on. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Okay. Wonderful. So, We've seen that Paul is talking about resisting the devil. Okay? So stand, therefore, having done all, stand. What does it mean? It's talking about resistance. Now, the enemy can come against us. But when we are standing, what is, what is the message that we are giving the enemy? Yeah, we are holding on. We are holding on. OK, you do whatever you want to do, but we will not move from here. We are immovable. Okay, we are against you. We will stand with all the energy that we have. Okay, so we are holding on. That is the meaning of stand. So stand against what? What should we stand against? What are some of his tricks? Yeah, confusion, lies, deception, temptation. So all of us as believers face these things. Right? On a daily basis, we are, we are facing these attacks. So when we are under these attacks, what are we supposed to do? Stand. This simply means resist. Don't accept it. Don't accept it. Resist. Overcome. And we are talking about the overcomer's lifestyle. We are supposed to overcome because we already have the victory. So when these attacks come against us, we stand. Stand, therefore. Opposition. Many things can come against us. At all points, we've got to stand. And Paul also is using the image or, or the imagery of a Roman soldier. And the way a Roman soldier gets dressed for war, he's asking us to put on the parts of the armor, put on the armor, the whole armor. Okay, so it does not mean physically, you know, we, we put on the armor. Even if we put on the armor, do you think uh, we are? vulnerable to the devil? Of course, like if you put a natural armor, it's of no use against the devil because his weapons are spiritual. And therefore, we've got to put on the spiritual armor. So when we look at those words there, like helmet, breastplate, um, or sword, all of this is imagery. 
for us to understand spiritual things that we need in our lives to protect ourselves against the devil. Uh, so what are some, some parts that he lists out? He says, helmet of salvation. It simply means the knowledge that I am saved, I am born again, I am in Christ Jesus. A believer needs to settle that in their hearts and have the assurance that they are born again. There should be no confusion regarding this matter. Okay, There should be no confusion regarding our understanding uh, about who we are in Christ. So when we are strong in the work of salvation and in our identity, it works like a helmet. Isn't helmet one of the most important um, you know, parts of the armor? Because otherwise the enemy can just get your head. Right? Once head is gone, everything is gone. So we, we've got to protect our head. And uh, that is why Paul is saying helmet of salvation in our minds to be aware that I am now born again. I'm a child of God. I'm redeemed. I'm blessed. I'm victorious. All these things have to be settled. I, I must be convinced, assured of these matters and never forget it. So when a believer is like that, so strong in their identity, do you think it's easy for the enemy to come and shake you? Never. It's not possible, right? He may try, but because the believer is so clear about their salvation and their identity, it becomes challenging to get that particular believer. But imagine a believer who doesn't understand salvation, assurance of salvation, very confused in Christ. I'm not sure, very confused. Do you think it's easy for the enemy to get that person? Very easy can actually go pick on that person because the Satan may have a fair chance, right? So helmet of salvation, put on the helmet, protect, protect that mind, protect your understanding about salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. So breastplate of righteousness might, would mean, uh, it could mean like you know our understanding that now we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus by grace that's what Jesus has done for us we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus so firstly we get that understanding of how God has made us righteous in Christ and secondly to walk in righteousness <coughs> you see when Adam and Eve sinned one act of disobedience it exposed the whole world to corruption. And we've talked about this, isn't it? We said God is so holy that even one small missing the mark, sin, it destroyed the future of you know, the world that Adam and Eve were living in at that point. So we know how holy God is and that one act of disobedience had such dire consequences. Right? So for us today, we have the instruction of God. We have the word of God. We know uh, what is right, what is wrong. The Holy Spirit is teaching us. We are being equipped. So when we know these things, we have to walk in those things. So knowing it, we disobey. And then we expect to be protected. It's very difficult. So breastplate of righteousness also means walking in righteousness. Okay? So that also will protect us. Belt of truth. Belt of truth simply means um, understanding the truth of God's word. God's word is the truth. So firstly, we've got to know it, understand it, but also walk in truth. Or uh, that refers to integrity, isn't it? To be truthful, to um, be the same person wherever we are, whether it's like in public or in private, we are truthful. We have integrity before God. We carry the right heart before God. So when we are living like that, that is also a protection. Satan cannot attack us. He can't get us. Right? So the belt of truth. Shoes of the gospel. Shoes of the gospel uh, refers to our readiness to share the gospel with people. So sharing of the gospel, it has to be a part of every believer's life. Because what did Jesus tell us? He gave us the great what? Great commission, isn't it? We are all supposed to go and share uh, about 
who Jesus is, what he has done, and uh, let people know that salvation has been made available to them. So sharing of the gospel is important, and that also is a part of our armor. Then we have the sword, the word of God. So the sword, uh, so, uh, like when we study about the parts of the armor of a Roman soldier, it is said that all the other parts are for defense. Okay, But there is this one part for offense. So defense is just simply protecting ourselves. But offense is going against the devil. What can we use um, as an offense against Satan? The word of God. That is the sword. So we can take the sword or the word and we can speak it in any given situation. And we know that we will have the victory. How did Jesus overcome uh, the temptation uh, after his fast 40 days? He was fasting and Satan came and told him many things. Yeah. So he used the word of God. He kept saying, it is written. It is written. It is written. What is Jesus doing? What we are discussing right now. Take the sword, just chop up the lies of the devil. So that is what we too would need to do. Use the sword of the spirit. It's an offensive weapon. Shield of faith. Shield of faith um, is shield. I'm, I'm sure we all understand what a shield is. You can hold it up, right? When wherever the, the arrows are coming from, you hold the shield, it protects you. It protects your heart. It protects in whichever part, like you just lift it up and it will protect us. Shield of faith, we are told. So when we have faith in God, strong faith in God, how does what, what does it act as? It acts as a shield. So when the enemy comes with his lie uh, and we are carrying faith in our hearts, he cannot get us easily because we are strong in our faith. Right? He can't easily get us with discouragement or uh, some accusation, some lies. Each time we have our faith in place and the arrows or the fiery darts of the devil are destroyed when we carry the shield of faith. Right? Let's quickly go to, um, I'll just go up here because it seems like there's a question. Uh, yes, Sister Gertrude? Sister, can I ask you which uh, word, uh, which uh... Uh, verse in the Bible we can use as uh, the w word of God. Uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't quite get your question. You said we have to use the word of God, right? Yes. So which word we can use from the Bible? Which verse? Okay, which verse? So whatever is appropriate for that situation, Sister Gertrude. For example, if um, uh, Satan is attacking us with fear. Then we have to speak scriptures that talk about overcoming fear or scriptures about courage, right? Like the way Paul told Timothy, you have not received a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So use the appropriate scripture for that situation. Okay, sister. Yeah. So you can apply it for you know various uh, uh, circumstances. Okay, great. Yeah, good question. Good question there. Any anything else? Any other thoughts? Okay, let's continue then. Uh, in our notes, the next section talks uh, somewhat elaborately about faith. We've already understood that faith protects us as a shield. It is also an offensive weapon against the devil. Uh, Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 17, and uh, we're looking at the, past, the verses given here in our notes, and I'll read for us a part of verse 20. Yeah, so where Jesus says that, you know, if somebody has faith like a mustard seed, and they speak to the mountain and instruct the mountain, move from here to there, it will move. And that last part of verse 20 says, and nothing will be impossible for you. So there are things that can be done by faith okay, that are amazing. Amazing things can be done 
by faith, when we carry faith, when we operate in faith. So faith is such an important uh, part of a believer's life to grow in our faith and keep our faith strong. Right? And when we carry that kind of faith, we'll keep overcoming the devil. His attacks uh, or you know tough situations, difficult situations, we go through those situations by faith. And we can even see the way it says here, uh, you know, very difficult things turn around. Nothing will be impossible for you. It's God helping us understand that incredible things can happen if we walk by faith. So a believer must employ faith. And when we are employing faith, we can keep living the overcoming life. Okay. So faith is so very important. Uh, and be strengthened in our faith. Keep our faith strong, make, making it stronger in God. How do we become stronger in our faith? Oh, come on. <laughs> How do we become stronger in our faith? Hearing and hearing by the word yeah, of hearing God. the word of God. You've all cleared a course. <laughs> we have to wait for like five seconds for the answer to come. So by the word of God, that's the primary way by which our faith grows. So the more I, I dwell in the word, the more I take in the word, hear the word, my faith in, increases. That's the way of growing our faith, right? The primary way. Of course, there are a couple of other uh, things that we can do. But the main way <coughs> is to get into the word, meditate on the word of God. Um, let's continue here. Let's see a few more uh, sections that teach us how to be overcomers. So we've talked about, um, you know, several things. Let me just recap for our understanding. Firstly, we said being in Christ helps us, protects us. Um, having intimacy with God is so necessary. And even when Adam and Eve did not have any weapons, that is what protected them. We talked about consecration and obedience to God, uh, the different parts of the armor. We've talked about faith. And finally, two more things that will help us um, be strong and protect us from the devil are intercession, right? Intercession and fasting. These are the next two things. So intercession. You remember at the time when uh, Jesus had the revelation that Peter, uh, say, Satan will attack Peter. What did he say to Peter? I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you so that he could overcome. So prayer is important. And in this case, we would call it intercession because Jesus prayed for Peter. So praying uh, and intercession is also helpful to protect us against Satan's attack. Many times we've, we've uh, spoken about prophetic prayer, isn't it? That God can help, he may, he may reveal to us ahead of time certain things that could happen. Why does God reveal in dreams and, you know, um, by some sort of, some prompt, prophecy? Why does God reveal ahead of time about Satan's attacks? Prayer. Okay, one of the main things that we have to do with the revelation that we receive is to pray, pray, intercede. Okay, and that protects us. So prayer uh, is another way to overcome the enemy's attacks. And then there is fasting. Uh, do you recall we've spoken about Daniel? Daniel was praying, fasting at a time when uh, you know, God had already released an answer to one of his prayers and it wasn't coming through because of a demonic interference. What did Daniel do? He prayed and he fasted. Right? So through that, God uh, overcame those demonic forces. He sent his angel. Uh, they fought. The angel fought, and then you know the answer actually came through to Daniel. So, what is the position that Daniel took? He gave himself to prayer and fasting. So, when we pray and fast, even then 
we can receive the victory of God and overcome the devil. So fasting is helpful. Uh, do you remember at the time when um, uh, like there was a person who came to Jesus and they wanted their child to be set free and the disciples could not cast out the demon? What did Jesus say? This is in Matthew 17. Again, Jesus said, this kind shall not go out except by prayer and fasting. Right? Fasting. So fasting, what does fasting do? Fasting helps us become stronger in our faith. And what do we need to cast out demons, to, to overcome the works of darkness? We need faith, isn't it? So when we fast, what happens is that our faith is strengthened and then we are able to overcome the enemy. So prayer or intercession and fasting are the other two aspects that will help us have an overcoming life. So if we have these elements in our day-to-day -day living, right? we're walking in obedience, we are putting on our armor, we have intimacy with God, we are people of prayer, people who fast, then we can keep overcoming the works of the devil, right? So let me just, excuse me, open it up for any questions. Yes, yes, Shani? Um, I just want to know in terms of how does the fasting help us become well stronger in our faith um because i was i just kind of see about how it intensifies our spiritual hunger but because i was told that like fasting doesn't move god that it just you fast just so that you can hear from him know what to do so i just i just wanted to actually in terms of um how does it help us get stronger in our faith and then you were saying something about god can reveal things about can you repeat that over because i was taking notes about god revealing things about i guess the devil and dreams and visions and then that way you can pray and fast and how to proceed is that what you were saying yes yes so um shani to answer your first question how does fasting help us so what fasting does as you rightly said it it does a work in us so it's not necessarily changing god in any way but it is changing us when we fast one way of looking at things is that um you know the, the fleshly part of us, right? Uh, it dies because you are refusing. You're refusing comfort. You're refusing um, pleasure, if you want to call it, you know, food. Uh, so what happens is that that fleshly part of our, you're actually crucifying the flesh. And you are making way for the spirit man to thrive, to grow. And therefore, we find that the spirit man uh, becomes more sensitive, becomes stronger, uh, develops, okay, develops. Uh, and with, I'm just trying to help us understand, like, even with this analogy, we, we, can, we can see that, you know, we, we are um, really helping our spirit man, okay? And when we meditate on the word, we incorporate the word you know, along with fasting, we are becoming stronger and stronger in the word of God. And as we're strengthening our spirit man, the capacity of the spirit man is increasing. Shani, and we are eliminating doubt. That's also another thing that happens. And as you're eliminating doubt and you're growing stronger in your faith, fasting is actually helping you become a stronger believer. Uh, Help, helping you to take your authority in Christ. Okay, uh, uh, did that was was that clear enough? Yeah, that was very helpful. And did, just to ask yeah. another question, yeah, uh, do you have to fast from food, or can it be like maybe like from the TV, from your cell phone, from? Yes. I mean, because some people, I don't know, I was heard there can be different things. I, I just didn't know, so I wanted to turn some clarification on that because some people can't really have a hard time fasting from food. Does okay. it? The beef food yeah. or right so we can we can fast other things um and, and not just food but we see many examples of fasting food in scripture so if that is a possibility then it's good to do that to fast food um not fast food but fast food uh, but yes we can 
we can engage in other forms of fasts where uh, we may want to skip things that we like or where we are spending a lot of our time um, the social media or you know other entertainment so that's also fine okay so basically something that that's pleasurable to us we should I mean, if we can't do food then yeah then something that's pleasurable to us fast from that yes yes okay that clarifies it thank you thank you i don't know if i answered your second question i forgot oh yes yeah. yes yes you did you answered it you answered it well oh, okay fine thank fine you. then all right so thank you everyone 10 minutes break and we'll come back at uh, uh, 10 a.m so see you all then thank you